Making a quality video game is just one of the ingredients to releasing a successful video game. As without a canny, attention-grabbing marketing campaign, even the best game has little chance of success. But the flip side of publishers marketing their great titles to players is the inevitable means through which they try to sell their not-so-great games to us, usually by any manipulative tactic that they can legally get away with. Yet long-time gamers should be able to spot many of their key marketing tells these days, where a game's trailer indicates its own sheer desperation to sell itself to potential customers. These 10 giveaways all send the red flags flying straight up, suggesting that more likely than not, publishers and marketing firms are trying their damnedest to hoover money from your wallet for a subpar product. And though we've all been duped every now and then, if you keep your eyes peeled for these 10 trailer tricks, you're far less likely to waste money on an awful video game. I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 ways trailers let you know a video game is secretly awful. Number 10. Celebrity Worship It's always suspicious when a game trailer focuses less on the gameplay and more on the name actor they've convinced to star by parking a dump truck full of cash on their lawn. Recently, Ghost Recon Breakpoint clearly hoped to reinvigorate the franchise by casting everyone's favourite gruff head rubber John Bernthal as its antagonist, Lieutenant Cole D. Walker. Most of the game's headlines consequently talked up Bernthal's presence while saying preciously little about the in-game mechanics themselves, and so it proved scarcely surprising at all when Breakpoint released to wildly mediocre reviews. Similarly, the trailers for Aliens Colonial Marines made a big deal out of franchise stars Michael Bean and Lance Henriksen lending their voices to the project. Yet this implied legitimacy was entirely contradicted by the final game, which was mechanically awful to say the least. To make matters worse, Bean's performance in particular was hilariously wooden, with the actor later complaining that Colonial Marines developers simply lacked passion for the project. Clearly, so did he. Number 9. Fluff text that means absolutely nothing Though most trailers sensibly rely on visuals to sell themselves to players, there are those that arrive with a hilarious whiff of marketing goonery, where an outside PR firm has clearly been enlisted to whip up some nonsensical flavour text intended to burrow deep into viewers' brains. Take Destiny's Become Legend, Crisis 2's Be The Weapon, or Resident Evil 5's Fear You Can't Forget. They're all taglines that sound catchy enough, but are ultimately completely hollow and meaningless in conveying much about the game at all. That's not all of it, though. There's also a common habit for game trailers to include PR guff by way of press preview quotes and dubious E3 awards, which are naturally written from mere brief slivers of gameplay shown off to the press rather than the final game itself. Basically, if a trailer features a pull quote without a score attributed to it, that's probably because the quote came from a 15-minute gameplay preview and therefore should be taken with a huge mountain of salt. Number 8. Being edgy with a capital E Controversy creates cash, as the saying goes, and though it makes sense that edgy games should be marketed to reflect their own boundary-pushing tone, sometimes it feels like trailers are simply desperate to evoke a reaction in order to drum up publicity from their mediocre game. Take the recent terrorist simulator Hatred, which was marketed with a focus on its gridmark protagonist professing how much he loathes humanity, intercut with a montage of wanton murder. It suggests a game being sold to freedom-loving gun nuts and angry teenage boys above all else, while downplaying any supposed depth or originality the gameplay itself might have had. Unsurprisingly, Hatred was negatively received by critics for its self-consciously incendiary tenor and tedious gameplay, though the marketing ultimately paid off as the game was a surprise commercial success. Number 7. Lazy Soundtrack Choices As crucial as the visual element of any game trailer is, music can be an extremely effective way to sell a game, and more importantly, distract potential customers from how crappy said game actually is. In addition to flat out using well-known pop music to lure in audiences, trailers will often jump on whatever musical trend is popular at any given moment. Dubstep has been used in trailers for years now in a pathetic attempt to connect with kids regardless of whether it fits the game tone or not. Looking at you, Sonic Boom. And the more recent trend of using slow, depressing covers of classic pop songs, such as Assassin's Creed Unity, quickly tired itself out. Little can turn a potential player off quicker than a wonky musical choice or any sort of inkling that music is being cynically used to compensate for lacklustre gameplay. Number 6. Showing no actual gameplay One of the most aggressively insidious and most obviously damning trailer tricks is simply failing to show any gameplay footage whatsoever. 
Ubisoft is a huge fan of releasing glossy CGI reveal trailers which, while beautifully animated, give zero impression of how the game itself actually looks or plays. Perhaps the most infamous example, however, is Dead Island's wonderfully directed and surprisingly effective CGI reveal trailer, which was nevertheless totally at odds with the decidedly goofier tone of the forgettable final game. At least Dead Island got the genre right though. Matterfall's debut trailer implied a gorgeous third-person sci-fi shooter, only to deliver a cheap-looking and relatively mediocre 2D side-scroller. Another tactic is switching out the CGI trailer for a live action one, and has been commonplace over the years with Call of Duty's various star-studded trailers that, again, show no actual gameplay whatsoever, because if we're honest, it's usually just more of the same. Number 5. Scripted Multiplayer Banter Nothing activates the cringe reflex faster than a trailer for a multiplayer game that's full of scripted banter between players, in a desperate attempt to sell how much of an exciting and dynamic social experience it is. Take The Division's infamous Dark Zone trailer, which is full of embarrassingly contrived dialogue that in no way reflects how players in a squad actually talk to one another in reality. Unsurprisingly, it was a clear effort to make the game seem more fun than it actually is, because The Division turned out to be a disappointingly empty experience upon release, before being patched into shape in the years that followed. Ubisoft loves doing this for most of their AAA multiplayer games, and the results are almost always completely off-putting for anyone who's ever actually played one of them before. Number 4. Spoiling way more than necessary This is admittedly a problem for not only video game trailers but also movie and TV marketing, spoiling way too much of the plot in a blatant attempt to lure audiences in by any means necessary. Take Resident Evil 6 for example, which tried to hook long-time fans of the franchise, myself included, by revealing the existence of Wesker's son, Jake. Except this is a fact that's actually treated as a relatively weighty reveal in the game itself, and clearly wasn't designed to be spoiled ahead of time. This bombshell couldn't paper over the fact that the game as a whole mostly stunk, though. Then there's Metal Gear Solid 5, which spoiled major beats from almost every single one of the game's cutscenes. This turned out hugely disappointing when fans played the game for themselves, only to realise that Metal Gear Solid 5 had decidedly less cutscenes than all prior Metal Gear Solid games, and the story was generally held to be a bust, no matter how great the core gameplay was. As with films, if a game's marketing is over-eager to give away huge morsels of story, it's usually because they're trying to divert the audience's attention away from something fishy. Number 3. From the team that brought you… Pretty much any time a game can't stand on its own two feet and let its gameplay speak for itself, it's a good time to be sceptical. Variations on the phrase, from the team that brought you, is a surefire indication that the developers aren't confident about their new project, and want to use their prior successes as a crutch. Case in point, we have the recently released survival game Ancestors – The Humankind Odyssey, which was hailed by Assassin's Creed director Patrice Desilets, and obnoxiously marked marketed as, from the minds that made you jump from rooftop to rooftop. Unsurprisingly for anyone who actually saw the rest of the trailer, the final game received wildly mixed reviews from critics, and for the most part was a colossal bore. Elsewhere, there's trailers for interactive survival horror game The Dark Pictures Anthology Man of Medan, which couldn't help but name drop developer Supermassive's previous game Until Dawn, despite Man of Medan being a huge decline in quality from that title. Great games don't need to stand on the shoulders of what came before, so it's always smart to be wary when a trailer invokes a company's prior pedigree a tad too eagerly. Number 2. Trying too hard to be funny Personality goes a long way in life, and where video games are concerned, charming marketing can certainly help paper over a game's actual deficiencies. But it's sensible to be distrustful of any trailer that just feels like it's trying a little too hard to be uproariously funny and chummy with the player, because there's a good chance the marketing team knows they're desperately struggling to fill the game's soulless void of quality content. Take Mighty Number no. 9, which infamously joked about making the game's bosses cry like an anime fan on prom night, a line which not only upset the anime loving quarters of the fanbase, but also underlined how flagrantly tone deaf and ill judged the project was as a whole. And then we have Crackdown, which tried to coast way too hard on admittedly considerable charms of Terry Crews in its trailers, in a clear attempt to compensate for how completely soulless the actual gameplay was. A sprinkling of humour to cement a game's tone is fine, but making a trailer more of a cringe-worthy stand-up routine than an actual gameplay showcase, mm, no dice. Number 1. If all else fails, sex sells. But if publishers are truly backed into a corner and faced with taking a mediocre game to market, there's always the most cynical of options. 
Sell it with sex. The most hilariously egregious example in recent years has to be the mobile strategy title Game of War Fire Age, which extensively featured buxom model Kate Upton in its marketing, in a most lazy effort to bring as many hormonal teenage boys into the fold as possible. Unsurprisingly, the game itself wasn't up to much, pilloried by most critics for its aggressive in-app purchases. Back on the console side, there's 2002's infamous sports game BMX Triple X, which was actually developed as a straight-up BMX racing game until publisher Acclaim realised that they had a turkey on their hands, and so quickly added nude character models, vulgar humour and sexy live-action clips of strippers into the game in an attempt to salvage a financial disaster. This obviously transpired through to the game's uh, unique trailers, which cravenly tried to distract from the game's non-quality with sex and raunchy humour. Gross. And there you have it, the trailers that let you know if a video game is secretly awful. I must admit, after the millionth time of seeing Kate Upton on my bloody phone, I was tempted to give it a go, but I didn't want that game in my face just as much as I didn't want her... Um, Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from What Culture, and I'll see you in the next video.